<laughs> it's Philly is funny with Bennett and Boss. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome, Yusef. Yes. Are we starting? We're starting. Yeah. Okay. We'll just, okay. just, just go in the deep end. Oh, we'll okay. Jump in. All right. I just wanted to start. How was your coffee? It, it is good. I love the Honduras coffee. Yes. Yes. You get two options here in the lobby for some reason. Only two, Peru or Honduras. Yes. I think you chose right. That's the one I usually do. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I saw Coco and I just went for it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that, that, uh, like we, just, we started, I wanted to start with a very scary Arabic voice. Hello, my name is Basim Yusuf. <laughs> and I'm coming here to scare the shit out of white people. <laughs> just set the tone. Yes. Yes. Just uh, they know that uh, what they're expecting this uh, weekend. <laughs> a little bit of uh, laughter with uh, a lot of scary shit. <laughs> That's me. Okay. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> Basim Yusuf, uh, you're known as the um, as the John Stewart of Egypt. Are, are you are you tired of of that? I'm tired of being asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> every single every single interview is like you're known that John Stewart. Well, John Stewart. I'm, I'm fine. And yeah. then the next section, are you tired of that? So here's my here's yeah. my honest question. Yeah. Like, listen, I'd be honored to be mentioned in the same sure. uh, uh, sentence, and I don't mind. And the thing is. Like, practically speaking, if you're coming here to the United States, it's like, oh, this guy did comedy in Egypt. All right, so what? who the, who the hell cares, right? right? Oh, he's a John Stewart of Egypt. So that's, that kind of gives them a little bit of reference, right? I mean, it's good. I mean, it's, it's better than anything else. It could be like, you know, he's the Rush Limbaugh of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> Your backstory is just incredibly boring. I mean, my I know, God. I know. Just a uh, snooze. I know, I know. <laughs> I, al- I always try to kind of like to add th- uh, the things to it, kind of to make it interesting. Yeah, jazz it up a bit. Yeah, yeah jazz it up a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. People are falling asleep. <laughs> uh, no, but your story is incredible. I mean, so you spent 13 years as, as a heart surgeon? Uh, 18. 18 years. I, like, I mean, yeah, if you added the medical school, yes. Okay. Yeah, so medical school, I was 18, 19 years. I was a heart surgeon and then uh, left everything uh, for comedy. And then because of that decision, a lot of people are alive today because I left medicine. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, keep it up. Keep, yeah, keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. <laughs> <laughs> But you almost came to the States, though. Uh, you're waiting for your visa. And you were going to move to Cleveland, Ohio. Is that correct? Well, well, I was going to. I mean, I didn't move to the States. I was waiting to actually go to Cleveland. Uh, I, I actually I was accepted, and it was just a matter of, uh, of paperwork. And then the revolution happened. Yeah. And then when the revolution happened, I mean, my life changed forever because suddenly we have, like, a whole new situation in Egypt. And then there was... Two different kind of situation: the situation in the streets and the situation that you see in the media, because they were spreading, you know, fo- f- like terrible conspiracy theories and and fa- and, fa- and fake news. I know that you're still getting to know fake news, but like we've we've had it a long time ago. And uh, and then suddenly, I'm I'm kind of pissed because of the lies that they are spreading. So I started to do YouTube videos. I didn't think a lot of people would watch it. Then suddenly, millions of people watching it. And then I'm offered to do a TV show. And that, so I, I left medicine and I went into comedy. That's and, wild. Uh, yeah. And uh, the rest is... Uh, and you didn't move to Cleveland, which is the biggest highlight <sighs> of all that. Thank God. Huge. Have, have Huge. you been there? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. And I said the joke of like, the, you know, uh, and a joke about like, thank God I didn't go to Cleveland, didn't go so well there. <laughs> and, and I don't think it's, I don't think that they kind of like, because they like their city, it's just because like they know it's true. So they kind of hated me for the joke. <laughs> <laughs> were you with your wife at the time when you made these these decisions did you get pushback from your family for leaving medicine to pursue comedy no no my wife was always supportive the, the pushback was always with, the, uh, with my parents you know my gotcha. mom was like oh my god you're leaving medicine to go to comedy i know she sounds jewish but <laughs> the, the, she 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 was uh, she was kind of like uh, she was kind of like surprised but then she she said well you have to promise me that you're gonna stay a doctor so I did. For actually the first year and a half, I would do the show and go to the hospital at the same time. And that's and that, oh that and, and yeah, and that was weird because you know the patients never took me seriously. And uh, because you see this guy <laughs> yeah. making jokes, it's like, all right, so we're gonna open your your chest. We are going to put an artificial valve in your heart. And it's like, ah, oh, you kidding? Oh uh, you know, just you're kidding me. It's like, no, no, it's true. So yeah, I had to leave because uh, I didn't have enough respect. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, did you ever make a YouTube video prior to just being like, "Hey, I'm gonna make one"? No, 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 no. I actually like I did it. I, 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 I was always mesmerized by John Stewart. I always watched his, his show like like years, years uh, before all of that happened. And then, but I, I was realistic. I said like, it will never happen in Egypt. You know, uh, but then suddenly there was an opening, there was an opportunity, and boom, 
Um, I did it, and I didn't even think that 10,000 people would even watch the show. And then in, 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 a, in, a, in a couple of weeks, I had 5 million. Now, I know that with today's standards, 5 million is nothing. You have your cat, you put it on YouTube, <laughs> it farts, it gets 5 million. No. But, but, but at that time, sure. 2011, it was, YouTube was in, at it in its infancy in Egypt, and there was not even uh, original Arabic content at that time. And uh, it's exploded. And then suddenly everybody wants to show on the television. So it's incredible. It was actually the first conversion from internet to television at the time. And then yeah. you get your, your show, which had, uh, what, 30 million viewers yeah. per yeah. episode or something silly like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, insane. One third of the population was one watching. One third of the population tuned into your show yes. weekly. Yeah, yeah. And it so, was kind of like the Super Bowl every weekend. Yeah. Everybody was like watching it without the uh, nachos. <laughs> okay. And yeah, so they're watching it. But the thing is, when, you, when something gets uh, too popular, uh, that's dangerous in the Middle East, especially when you have an authority that doesn't like to be made fun of. So we had the Islamists coming to power. And uh, at that kind of, uh, I found myself having like a warrant for my arrest. And then I had to be interrogated. And, uh, and I talk about that in my show. I kind of like, I, I talk about that. It's kind of like a one-man show. And I, and I describe the scene of the interrogation. And it, it, is, it, it is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a, I mean, it's not, people do think like, oh my God, it was scary. No, it was so funny. I mean, the good <laughs> thing about like authoritarian regime is that they give you a lot of material. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, then, and then I had that, uh, I, I, and for a year, I was kind of like a public, like a national hero because I was like standing against the extremists and the Islamists and whatever. And then uh, a military coup happened and then the army took over and everybody welcomed it, including me because we were scared of the Islamists. And then the military kind of like got their own fascist uh, regime. So as a comedian, equal opportunity offender, I made fun of them. Sure. And that cost me a lot. Now, the thing is, the Islamists weren't very popular, but the army is very popular. So the army can do whatever the hell they want. Mm -hmm. So even people from my own family kind of like boycotted me and didn't talk to me. And then I ended up having like a... Uh, the show canceled a couple of times and I had like people coming around my theater wanted to burn down the theater and like I had like death threats and whatever. And then I had to escape uh, from Egypt at the end. And, and what I, year was that when you when you finally left? Uh, kind of like 2014. 2014. And then I stayed like a couple of years in Dubai and then I came to America, right, as Trump is becoming president. So. Wow, good for you. Yes. <laughs> so that's... that's the material so, just keeps coming. So that's the second half of my show. It's like, so the first half of my show is... I talk about my life as a doctor, as someone who went, found himself in the comedy, the interrogation, the, all of, the, the, of that stuff, the, 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 the turbulence in Egypt. And then the second half is like, what happens to me here as an immigrant in, in Egypt, in, in America under these times? So it's, uh, it's a story. It's a, that's why I tell people it's not your usual stand-up comedy. Right. It's actually a storytelling. It has a, it's a, it's a, it's a stand-up style, but there's also, I, I show people videos and I show people like, I, I, there's music and there's uh, pictures and stuff that actually really happen. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, doing the, the show. I just appreciate how, how you find comedy throughout this entire process. Um, where, but behind the scenes, inside, were you ever genuinely really nervous about your life, your family's life? Well, I, you know, <laughs> looking back, I was actually more nervous about not doing a good show. I was nervous about like, you know, I was actually more scared about of the uh, Twitter trolls more than the authority. <laughs> it's kind of like They're because scary. Yeah, but, I mean, Those okay, bloggers, because, because like, you know, what would happen like if the government takes you, right? You're a mortar, right? You're a hero. It's like, oh, look at the guy who's like jailed because of his jokes. Yeah, I'm everyone, you know? But then if you do a show and it's not that funny, yeah, that's painful, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. It's kind. Of, that's why it's kind of like we're we we we. I don't know. I think there's something about being exposed about the, about fame. It it's very intoxicating. Yeah. It's you just and 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 you're scared. I would like you because we talk when 30 million people watch you, and people say, "Oh my God, that's amazing." Well, no, that's terrible. It means that 30 million people have an opinion about you. It's terrible. You 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 write a post on Facebook and just two people give an opinion and you're like. Ah! What do you mean? How come you talk to me like this? And then I remember like 30 million people having like this. So it's very stressful. It's is very... it more pressure doing stand-up comedy or a TV show than like doing heart surgery? Is it more more pressure for you? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Really? Yeah, because if you did heart surgery and you mess up, I mean, you, ju you just have an audience of two nurses. But but then if you mess up on national TV, it's yeah. like, ah, 
ah, this guy is not funny and it haunts you for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm not saying that like killing people on an operating table is bad, <laughs> but I'm just saying that exposure is, is worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole different world. Yes. <laughs> Imagine like doing surgery and like 30 million people watching. It's like, ah, 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 that's not the right suture. <laughs> no, no. You're wrong. No, so, oh my God, is that an incision? Canceled. That's terrible. <laughs> my five years old can make a better incision. <laughs> So how's life uh, for you now living in the states? It's been what you said, like five years. I live in uh, yeah, four yeah, three four three and a half year, years in Los Angeles, a year in, in in the in the East Bay. I love Los Angeles. Yeah, it's, uh, it's lovely. Yeah, you're just bragging about the weather. Oh yes, off mic. oh my god, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a rude like, awakening coming to Philadelphia. Yeah, sure. I'm coming here to, and then he's telling me, "Oh, it's mild. It's been like 65. It's like in Los Angeles, mild is 85. <laughs> that's that's my mild. It's like I I I I enjoy my habitat. And uh, no, Los Angeles is great. I love the weather there. It's, uh, and it's also it has like the same weather as Egypt, the same traffic as Egypt. So I feel quite at home. Are you a full fledged American now? Do you have a TikTok and everything? Have you totally uh, <laughs> appreciated the American culture? I will never do TikTok. Thank God. Thank yeah. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, if they offer me, if me money, I will do it yeah, because right. I have absolutely no <laughs> principles. But right now, I'm not going to do the TikTok. But uh, yes, so uh, being American. So actually, four weeks ago, I got my passport. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I can't say my, I got mine like two years ago. I'm like, my uh, where are you from originally? I'm from here. No, but I just like got my passport. I just was just you lazy. You never had one. I just, I just didn't have one. Uh-huh. Mine yeah. is expired right now. I got to work on it. Is that, that right? But, yeah, yeah. So. God, guys, 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 I I, this is all small talk. <laughs> I got my passport four weeks ago. I became, this is, this, you should celebrate this. This is amazing. I, I, yeah, I'm excited. I, 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 I don't feel the excitement, man. <laughs> I don't feel the excitement. Damn it, Basil. I just, I, I, I you mean, just said, oh my roof. God, welcome to America, <laughs> welcome. man. We're so happy you're safe. That kind I of thing. You're but safe. like I tell them, I got my passport for weeks. Like, oh, it's like I didn't. I just like I was too lazy. It's like, whoa! Like, come, <laughs> come on, man. man. I feel like I'm just talking to a guy <laughs> from Cali over here. No. Congratulations. No, I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually very happy because uh, I got the passport, and then the first day, you know, it 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 was interesting because you know we had a video by Donald Trump welcoming us new immigrants becoming <laughs> citizens, and I even have the letter welcoming me signed by him. So I have his wow. like very flamboyant signature in my life for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I actually got my, I and I had the uh, the oath, uh, the, the ceremony on the day of his impeachment. So, oh my God. <laughs> so it's just like, it's kind of like, is this authentic? <laughs> I did like, can, can I use that? Can I cash this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's yes. hilarious. Yeah, and I had like my passport and... Uh, and I kind of like when I went out, I was like, oh, my God, I'm an American now. I mean, what can I do? I mean, I should I, I should do things that other Americans do, you know, complain about everything or go out, buy a gun or or just like find an ethnic guy in the street and tell them go back to where they came from. I mean, like I, all of that stuff that like red blooded, like, you know, red hot blood American can do. And and I didn't do that yet. What are you waiting for? I know, I know. I want to. <laughs> are these some of the observations you've uh, you've made since coming to America that uh, we we do complain? I mean, we do complain a lot. I mean, we complain. We find new things to oh, complain. Oh no, no about. listen, listen. Everybody complains. Yeah, I so mean, that's, that's no different. No, no, no. Country. Everybody complains. It, okay. It's just people. Uh, uh, here's the thing. All right, uh, joking aside, we yeah. we like to to make fun of about, like what the people in America, why people in America. But the thing is, like, it's just like like everybody else. So, for example, one of the very common uh, stereotypes: Oh, Americans know nothing about the world. Right? That's like, oh my God, we're so into ourselves. We don't know what. Do you think someone in Egypt knows uh, something about uh, something happening in Gabon? Right. Or Cameroon? No. I mean, you know, everybody has their own thing. It's kind of like every, because everybody, everyone knows about America mm-hmm. because it is the strongest country in the world and it's, it's, it's leading the world into culture. So, yes, we know about your movies. Or whatever. Why would you know about Egyptian movies? There's no reason, right? So it's it's uh, and and the thing is like also it's like oh you know so much more than us. No, if you, it really depends on the level of education. You know, if you meet uh, you you, you want, you're like because you're comparing people who've traveled a lot in Egypt with, for example, someone who never left his town. That's 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 not a good comparison, right? You know, so no, I think it's it's just like all of these jokes aside, it's like everybody's the same at the end of the day. Yeah. You have your own stuff that to complain, and you should complain. You know, it's like hey, you pay him for this, yeah. You're yeah. paying customers in this country. You pay taxes. I pay my taxes. I need to complain. You see, that sounds amazing. I'm going on Twitter. I'm, I'm complaining. <laughs> I'm going to write my Yelp review. Yes. <laughs> so as a doctor, sw- switching gears here, I want to get some advice. Are, you're a vegan, right? Is that, did I read that correctly? Yes, I always say I'm Arab and vegan, which makes me scary and annoying. <laughs> 
I see. I'm 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 really fitting in in Los Angeles. My you first are. car, my first car was a Prius. I'm oh vegan, and I wake up every day trying to find something new to offend me. That is <laughs> that is in. me in Los Angeles. Yes, I love Los Angeles, man. You think everyone should be vegan? I saw like a, a face, uh, not Facebook, Instagram post. Uh, you shirtless, you ripped, man. Oh my, yes, my God. Yes. So is that the secret? Should everyone be vegan? Yes, and then also you're gonna see a lot of these posts. I'm gonna, I'm kind of like getting more comfortable in my shirtless body. Yeah. I'm loving my body. <laughs> yes, the body positivity, all that. <laughs> shit. You yes. are LA. You are yeah, so LA. Yeah. So, so here's the thing about the vegan thing. So, yeah. uh, I actually I've been vegan for uh, plant based whole food diet, not just vegan, okay. because it's different. Uh, I six, six years ago, yeah. and I was inspired by a friend of mine who had MS, multiple sclerosis. Right. And as a doctor, to find a guy with this kind of disease who can reverse it, I was like, what? I need to search into it. So I, I watched all the movies, Forks Over Knives and The Cowspiracy, and then I kind of like met those doctors, and I said, like, I need to bring this to the Middle East. And I actually created a platform called Plant B. Uh, the website, plantb.tv, that's the the platform. It's the only platform in the world that's bilingual and talks about plant-based diet. And it has everything. We created videos, we we have recipes, we have science, and we even have... So when I launched, I launched it last year in, in the Middle East, and mm. people like made fun of me. It's like, oh my God, you're doing vegan in the Middle East? We had 20 million views. Really? Wow. Yeah, and all of our platform. And uh, I'm actually like uh, looking for investors in the Middle East to actually expand that, to kind of uh, have more people getting into it. And, and, and my approach to being vegan is not what you used to. I'm not a militant vegan. I don't like, I don't shame people for their choices. It, it, my, my, my approach is not like the ethical veganism. Mm-hmm. It's very healthy. So I, I tell people, listen, you want to ha- have a cheeseburger every now and then, it's not the end of the world. It's yeah. like what you do 95% of your time. 95% of your time is like still a lot of plant-based whole food diet. So, and I, and I tell people, if you have a chronic disease, why don't you try this for a change? If you're 100% healthy, you have no complaint, you can live a li- uh, live it a little bit every now and then. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 I've been much healthier with this. Really? And uh yeah, like uh more energy, better More mood. energy. Like, heard. Yeah. yeah, you know, I like my skin is just very good. Mm-hmm. You're just glowing. Like, yeah, I'm glowing and uh <laughs> and uh I helped a lot of people reverse their chronic diseases and I actually want to continue doing that. So That's it's incredible. Uh, for me I'm I'm kind of like focusing on the disease reversal aspect. That's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, well, while you're in town, uh, we were talking about vegan cheesesteak spots. I mean, you have to have a cheesesteak. Yeah, and, and, the, and the edge, verge, what's the? Veg. Veg? Ve- veg, veg, yeah. I, I, I was here there, before yeah. and I tried it. Oh, okay. V- yes. Good? Yeah. Pass yeah. the test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the one that you were talking about that he has uh, to try? It's called Vegan Tree. It's on South Street, like South and 8th. I used to live, like, right above it. Ooh, um, nice. We don't it's endorse really them, good. so we're not yeah, making I, money. Yeah, yeah it was I just, just yeah. like really love it. They should it. be sending us like something now. They should, yeah. As, yeah. as they the listen. Hell, man. Yeah. No, it's like a little small place. It's great. So if oh. you're on South Street, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, I, I, would, I would go. I would go. Explore yeah. the cold, dirty streets of Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boss. Awesome. No, no. I like I like Philly. I like Philly. Actually, I, I, I have a picture with next to uh, Rocky Balboa's... Uh, Oh, I you, did, oh, you did that? I, yeah. yeah, I was here before, and I actually did like ten. I like, there's like there's a, a song. Rocky like, steps. Yes, yeah. I did. And, yeah, and I kind of like I was out of breath. By the way, I, uh, <laughs> so yeah. you had the whole Philadelphia experience already. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a cool city, and I love the murals here too. Lot, yes. Yeah, most murals. Yeah. I think in the U.S. She was she was a tour guide in I Philadelphia was. before oh. radio. Yeah, so she can tell you all about it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She, already, she already she already gave me like a, a name of a great vegan joint. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. She knows all the hot spots. She's very useful. Um. So you have. <laughs> well, I'm here. <laughs> It's like a Snapple cap. She has all the all the fun facts. <laughs> City of Philadelphia. Uh, so you have what a show tonight? Uh, what's, what's the schedule? I, I have two shows tonight okay. on Friday and two shows tomorrow at uh, the Philly punch, uh, Punchline Philly, and uh, I'm excited because I haven't done the Punchline Philly before, and uh, it's it's a cool place. And I and I just knew that it's actually uh, relatively new. It's been here for three and a half years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, come out, Philadelphia. Come Don't worry. Out. I mean, there's nothing to fear other than a little bit of a cold weather and coronavirus, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. What's a little coronavirus? Hey, we're going to laugh it off. We're going to laugh it off. Like, ah, I'm dying. Laugh it off. Laugh it off. <laughs> Doctors, no, it's fine. Yes. That's true. Yeah, where else would you want to be? Come right. on. Be with yeah. the doctor. Yes, you can be somewhere warm and where everybody is drunk and laughing. I mean, come on. It's the best thing ever. Right. Love it. Yeah. Awesome, Youssef. See him uh, tonight or this weekend, Punchline Philly. Tonight, two shows tonight and two shows tomorrow, 7.30 and 9.45 at uh, Punchline Philly <laughs> and the Toronto uh, Street and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> You got that? Perfect. Yes. Punchlinephilly.com. Grab your tickets. Thank mm. you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Thank you.
Philly is funny with Bennett and Boss exclusively on radio.com.